Hello world, it's John Pinto, your roving realtor, bon vivant video blogger, and I am here with Ted Stefanos of HomeGuard Natural Hazard Disclosures. Hi, Ted. Hello, John. How are you doing today? I spit all that out pretty good uh, this time, didn't I? Uh, perfect. You're getting, <laughs> you're getting the hang of it. <laughs> and uh, Rafael Betances. Uh, Rafael, uh, say hello and tell us what your capacity is at uh, HomeGuard. Hey everyone, uh, this is Rafael Betances. I'm the San Francisco North Bay Territory Manager. So for any of your inspection needs, I'm here to uh, help. Excellent. So uh, today we're going to talk about formally used defense sites. Uh, and it's not something that comes up in everyday conversation between buyers, sellers, and uh, realtors. So please advise us on what the various communities need to know about that part of the disclosures. Sure. So formerly, formerly used defense sites. These are areas that were once owned and operated by the Department of Defense. It could be U.S. Army, Navy. And um, the thing is, in California, we have so much disclosure, more so than any, any other state. And usually you have that disclosure because something bad happened, right? Whether it's an earthquake or horrible fire, something like that. So, and this, this is also true for formerly used defense sites because back in the 1980s, I think it was 1982, 1984, there were three children that uncovered a live device in the Tierra Santa area of the San Diego Hills and it detonated and killed the three kids. Now, mm. this was a bomb that was left over from uh, World War II training exercises. And, uh, and so legislation was passed right after that time to uh, establish guidelines to say if there was an area that was once owned and operated by the Department of Defense where they may have left behind unexploded ordnance that could also be chemical weapons, then that would have to be disclosed if you're listing property within one mile of those areas. So um, if, if it's a, a formerly used defense site where they never did any ordinance testing or usage or then that would not show up on the list. Um, so it's, it's just these formerly used defense sites where there may be unexploded ordinance left behind. So some of these areas, um, I think there's about 600 sites around the state of California and uh, you know, and, and you know, there are more so in Southern California, especially in the, in the deserts, Inland Empire and eastward where they did so much training. San Diego did a lot of training, but we definitely have some in the Bay Area as well. Okay, and are there any particular locations where there might be a preponderance of these in the North Bay? In the, uh, or in, in the, the North Bay Area? Bay? Well, in the, in the Bay Area. Benicia Arsenal would be one. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's an area that, uh, and then Camp Stoneman, so almost every Every NHD report that we do in the city of Pittsburgh is going to be in one mile of Camp Stoneman because back in World War II, that was an area used for troop training. So there might be mortars, machine gun, there might be bullets, uh, all kinds of uh, in things left behind in those areas. So that was a pretty big area right around the uh, city of Pittsburgh, like I said. And uh, so I mentioned- How about Mayor, Mayor Island? Yeah, Mare Island would no. be, that falls under the BRAC program, so the Base Realignment and Closure Program, but we still do disclose that area as well. Uh, Monterey? Fort Ord. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, that's pristine real estate that I don't know if it's ever going to get developed, especially in our lifetime, because of the, uh, just the sheer amounts of, of ordinance that's left behind in that area. Boy, that's prime real estate too. So, uh, yeah, they're, they're quite, I, I live near uh, Sunnyvale Ordnance Depot. So it was an area where they uh, created munitions and stored munitions. And so it's now a park, Washington Park. But, you know, I just never wanted to dig around in the sand in, in those areas. But, uh, yeah, there are quite a few, uh, you know, 20 or so bow machine gun range. There's a Livermore gunnery range there's san francisco has a lot of old battalions along the coast seacoast battery defense sites fort, fort mason were, fort mason is one yeah that was actually dates back to the civil war so uh hmm. and then you have also even 
the Cold War where you had missile silos, right? The Nike missile silos, those are considered formerly used as defense sites. Now, obviously they would have pulled the missiles out of the ground. That's not the issue. But still there were troops that were housed there. They might have had a um, shotgun or rifle range, things like that. Uh, Hamilton Air Force Base in Novato, that's one. A lot of it has to do with in that area is um, is not necessarily ordinance, but also a lot of uh, um, environmental concerns. So, and that's, that would show up on our environmental report, but toxins that might be left behind in the ground and groundwater contamination due to toxins and things. Well, on, on a scale of uh, one to 10, uh, when people are looking at the disclosures, you know, they're looking at flood, they're looking at earthquake, they're looking at a lot of things before they're looking at ordinance. Um, so yeah, I, in all these years, I've been in this business 27 years. I don't think I've ever got one phone call on the FUDs, to be honest with you. FUDs, Elmer FUDs. You're saying <laughs> Elmer FUDs. Formerly used defense sites. Yeah, we like to use acronyms of the federal government, that, right? That's right. Excellent. So, uh, uh, Ted, if uh, any of our viewers uh, want uh, to check your website in the appropriate tab, where do they find information on this subject? Yeah, anyone can go to homeguard.com and click on the NHD button and you can find out everything that's in our NHD report. My phone number's in there as well. They can give me a call at 408-690-2149 and I can direct them to uh, the right places because everything that we have in our NHD report is public information. We're not coming up with this information on, on a whim or by ourselves. So I can direct them to uh, public sites as well for if they want to browse this info. Very helpful. And uh, Raphael, in case they're too lazy to proactively dig into the site and they just want to call Raphael, their concierge for um, PDFs and being emailed and texted to them, what's your contact information? Absolutely. You can email or text me or call me. Uh, my number is 707-616-8762. And my email is r betances at homeguard.com that's r-b-e-t-a-n-c-e-s at homeguard.com thank you for viewing our video and we'll see you on the next page